what is going on guys here we are back again and we are going to be doing the stripper showdown that's right the stripper showdown now as you guys know usually when you spend money on a stripper you don't really get much of a return for your investment but when you spend money on these strippers you are because this is a different kind of stripper altogether that we are talking about today and we've got three different ones here that we're going to be talking about i would normally you know go through pros and cons and stuff like that but there really aren't any cons with any one of these these are all three excellent strippers now there's possibly one in the bunch that maybe doesn't make it all the way to being a full-on what you would call a all-in-one multi-tool that does everything because to be an all-in-one in this category you're gonna have to do three things you're gonna have to cut you're gonna have to strip and you're gonna have to crimp so one of these guys might fall a little bit short in the crimping category but you will have to stay tuned in to find out which one so let's go ahead and go over the numbers on these things here right over here to the left with the the beautiful german engineering is the big fancy knipix and the number on these things is a 1382 8 and you've got to be careful when you're buying these things because knipix has such a wide variety of tools in every line they just change one number and you'll get totally the wrong tool because every number stands for the individual tool one number stands for the style of handles and then the other one is like the length and stuff like that so you got to be real careful they make another version that is identical to these but it is spring loaded and originally i was kind of wanting that i thought it might be nice to have springs on these things um, but it is more of a European tool because up here, instead of having our American wire sizes and stuff, it had like millimeters. And when I talked to one of the guys at a distributor that sells these things, he said there does seem to be a slight difference. You wouldn't think there would be any difference whatsoever. It is just the same size drilled out holes and crimper they just put different numbers on there for the United States and the other place over the pond there because they like to do things different, you know. They like to do all those kilometers and all that good stuff. But he said that he does seem to get some of those back that apparently guys in America say they don't strip quite as well. So you want to look for that number there, the 1382.8, if you're going to get these and this handle is superb they do have one that's a step down it's just a dipped handle save you a few bucks but spend the extra money and get these handles man these are incredible and the engineering on these is just superb it is impeccable there you can't find a thing wrong with these they are flawless all right and then we'll move on over here to these little guys this is a seven inch this is the carlisle this is kind of their I guess you could maybe call it a bastard, a, I can't even say it, a bastardized version of Snap-on. Uh, it, it's kind of a rip-off of Snap-on, but it's the same company that makes the damn things. You're just going to pay a lot more money for Snap-ons. You're going to get the fancy red handles, but to be perfectly honest with you, I have a pair of the Snap-ons. I only got them because I know a guy that works there that got me an employee discount and i basically got them for half price and it's the only snap-on tool that i own and it was in a spare bag and i hardly ever used them and one time when i went to use them one of the handles pulled off and i thought well hell that ain't worth a damn you know you can do better than that out at harbor freight so i happened to catch the snap-on guy one day at a gas station went on the truck there while he was filling up with gas and he handed me another pair so that's the only good thing about snap-on you do have that warranty but 
these are my go-to's this is my everyday carry this is in my bag every single day this is the ones i prefer i like them better than the snap-on they have a matte finish compared to the snap-on is kind of a highly polished finish i don't think these rust quite as easily um, they do have a little bit of adjustment up there uh, on the nut so if if you like yours where they just fall right open when you let go of them you can adjust them that way i don't i don't like my tools to just fall right open i like them to have a slight little bit of tension so these are adjustable and also the nipix has got some adjustable tension for you there um, but these you know to uh, to be a bastard version of snap-on uh, this is what i prefer you know these are forged on the same assembly line you can put them next to one another and man they are identical there's another cheapo version out there i think mac tools and some other ones make a version but there's a little bit different up here and they are much cheaper they are flimsy feeling they don't feel anything like these so either pay the big bucks and get the snap on or go to napa auto parts and get the carlisle right here and as far as a number on those i'm not exactly sure what the number is but i mean they only have one pair of them out there at napa and then over here we're rounding out the group with the good old Kleins. we all love our Kleins, and i'm here to tell you guys this is one of the best kept tool secrets on the market i don't know how more people don't know about these i never see guys talking about them i never see guys doing videos on them i never see guys using them in a video and i don't understand that because these things are amazing and if you're talking about strictly crimpers i can pretty much guarantee that probably 85 to 90 percent of you guys have the old maroon handled klein crimpers in your tool bag right now that's just what most guys prefer some guys might with go with the the channel lock they're pretty much identical up there but most everybody considers those good old maroon handled clines to be the best crimper on the market well you can see here that from here up they're identical that's the exact same head that's the same anvil style cutter up there it is the same crimper layout but look at all this goodness going on down here look at all this magic you got another really sharp cutter here for stranded wire and then you've got the stripper and then on top of that these have some of the best handles of any klein tool on the market there's not another tool that they make with these but if you can see there you sort of got a glimpse of it when the light hit it there's a little bit of there you can kind of see that I don't really know how to describe that but it just has a feel to it that is slightly tacky but it, it gives these things some grip but it, it's not just the material that they're made out of but it is the styling the shaping the curvature the ergonomics um, just everything about these handles are fantastic so if you've got the the old crimpers and you were ever looking to replace those you know maybe they got wet and rusted all to pieces maybe you left them on the back of the bumper of the truck and took off and now they're stuck in somebody's tire going down the road or maybe some guy on the job site liked them a little better than you and walked off with them and you're going to buy another pair i mean why the hell would you buy the old just plain old crimpers when you can get this you know forget about the strippers <clears throat> just the crimper with these new handles I would much rather have this over the old dip style because these are fantastic but then to get all this right here and have an all-in-one tool that is the way to go it's 10 more bucks 10 more bucks over the the old crimper style there and of course the number on these is the 2005 n as in nancy so I just don't understand why more guys aren't talking about these. Now, as far as being an all-in-one and doing everything you need, you've got a cut, you've got a strip, and you've got a crimp. Now, as far as a cutter goes, 
the reason these stay in my bag all the time is because of that cutter right there. This cutter is phenomenal. You get your finger in there, it's gone. You might as well forget it. It's gonna cut it clean off with no effort. That cutter is amazing. So for larger gauge wire, your eight and 10 and stuff like that, for you installers that are putting in the HVAC equipment and also for electricians, I would probably steer you guys toward these over either one of these other two, just because you're gonna have that cutter to cut the larger gauge wire. The main stuff that you're gonna be stripping is going to be uh, 12 and 14. You've also got some good, you know, pulling capabilities up here. You can grab some stuff, you can twist it. You're gonna be able to twist hooks into the wire you know to get up underneath the screws and then these have a nice little feature up at the top if you can see it the last few millimeters of those jaws do not have you know the rough kind of like a serrated file type gripping surface it's just smooth so if you think about when could that come in handy when you are replacing a thermostat on a wall on an existing unit and the guys that put that thing in originally didn't leave you much to play with. And the wires are not coming through the wall far enough to make it down to those holes to get it into the little hole and get that screw tightened on it. And you need a little bit of pull, but you don't want to tear the wire all to pieces. You don't want to pull the sheathing off of it and leave a bunch of bare ratty looking stuff. So the next guy comes behind you, pulls that thermostat off the wall and say, man, what kind of joker mangled this up? But you can grab that wire with the tips of these things and tug on it and get you those extra couple of centimeters that you need to finagle down into that hole and get that screw tight on that thermostat wire. So as far as, like I said, installers and electricians, this is probably the, the direction to go. These things are so slim they're so lightweight, they're so well balanced, they're not gonna take up hardly any room in your bag. And you're gonna get a lot of functions out of that. But I'll go ahead and tell you, these are the ones that fall a little short on the crimper. And we'll do some crimping here in just a minute. But to look at that, you would think that ought to crimp just as good as anything else. I mean, there's no reason that it, it shouldn't crimp but for whatever reason, these don't really crimp that good. And this is made for more of what they call a ferrule. And I don't really know if we use a lot of ferrules here in the United States or not, or if that is more something that they use over in England or whatever, but that is when you have a piece of stranded wire like that. And instead of just jabbing that into a hole, you know how everything splays out and you end up with some wires sticking out there and the next guy comes along, accidentally goes by one of those with his hand and gets a little shocker there. Uh, so you don't have all that mess. They put a ferrule over the end of this and then that thing makes the crimp in the ferrule and it just gives you one kind of a stiff piece of metal that slides up into the hole. Just makes it a lot easier, a lot cleaner looking. So that is more so meant for crimping ferrules and not our type of spade terminals that we're gonna be using. So when you crimp down on this, it does take significantly more effort than these other two and you can pull the terminal off. And that's the thing, when you give it the tug test after you've crimped it down and you pull on it, if it comes off, that ain't good enough for me because that is gonna to lead to a hot wire and a hot wire is eventually gonna to start to burn and melt. And that's when you know, you're pulling high amps and, and stuff like that and burning and melting wires off. So would I trust the crimper on those? No, I wouldn't. Uh, but everything else about these is a fantastic tool. Now on these, you guys know how good they crimp. I don't have to tell you how good they crimp. That is the same thing that you're used to using. You've got both crimpers there. They are up above the pivot point, so it's one-handed. You, you do not have to grab hold of these things with both hands and do a Hans and Franz move on them and give it all you got to get a, a terminal crimp down good and tight. 
one hand can easily crimp a terminal to where it is not going to pull off. So these have two different cutters. You've got the strippers. You've got a great crimper. You've got fantastic handles. So these are a go. These are always on the van. Uh, I did carry them in my bag as an everyday for a while. And then when I scaled down my bag to a smaller one, the, the field piece BG36 bag, that's when I, you know, scaled down to these and put these back in my bag because for years and years and years, these just never left my bag. And now they're back, and, and that's the only thing that I carry. These things, for as small as they are, 7 inches, they're amazing. It, it is just amazing. These are going to make the prettiest crimp out of the bunch. So we'll see if we can go ahead and make a few crimps here. I know the video is getting a little bit long, but we'll go ahead and crimp a few. I'll let you take a look at them and see what you think. Um, but we're just going to get a couple of connectors out here and we'll crimp a few on see how it goes i've got to kind of do it one-handed so you got to bear with me i'll probably just pause the video here for a second get set up and then we'll give them a go and see how it turns out be right back all right guys through the magic of television we are set back up we've got our spade ready to go just one hand and just a little squeeze there and we'll see what we got. Very nice. Very nice looking crimp. It is not cutting through the insulation. You don't see any bare metal down underneath there. Both sides looking really good. And I don't even have to pull on it. There ain't no way that's coming off there. So very nice the good old Klein you can never go wrong with one of those Klein crimps so let's get set up with another one see how it looks all right here we are back again we've got the little Carlisle's now the thing I like about these you do have a little more clearance on those Kleins that back um, crimper the one without the dimple the one that's for insulated terminals it's pretty close to the pivot joint so it can be a tight squeeze especially with your bigger terminals but these smaller ones not much of an issue but these give you a little bit more room there and then same thing man one-handed we're going to end up with a beautiful crimp where'd you go here we are I think that looks probably just a little bit better than the Klein. Both sides looking good. No metal showing through the insulation. Really nice crimp there. Good and tight. Ain't going nowhere. So for a small crimper, seven inches, that's amazing and then you do have that little plier up at the top I, f I failed to mention that for grabbing stuff you can see a few little teeth there that's real good for grabbing your uh, blown spade fuses when you come up on a low voltage short I can just grab these right out of my bag that's always one of the first things right there that I can go to and grab those pull those out they can work as a pair of pliers pulling wires off of capacitors and stuff like that to check them um, but those cutters on these things are amazing you guys know the sound that a really sharp pair of cutters makes when you go through a piece of wire they just kind of make that shink sound it's just a certain sound i don't know how to describe it but man it, it just has that sound it's so sharp it's just shink right through i mean that was with two fingers you know clean cut there and you, you do have a little cutter on the back and a cutter on the front. They made use of all the space on these things. They're both the same, front and the back. There's the back and just straight through there. Just It's, it's just a sound that it makes. And then the Klein had that type of cutter back here on the back for stranded. And then that's your, your big beefy one up there. That's the one for cutting the hard wire. That's the one, you know, when you've done a line set and you got 20 wire ties with tags going all down through there, 
you come in behind there with these babies and just pop, 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 pop one at a time, cut off all those wire tie tags, get them down there so you got two different types of cutters on the clines. So now let's go ahead and do the last crimp with these things here and see how they do. All right, so here we are back with the Knipics. It's a little more awkward to get in there and one-handed, I can't do it. I can't even do it one-handed. That is not gonna be crimped worth a darn right there. Yeah, I mean, we, we don't even have it. That would pull off in a heartbeat. Now, if I do that two-handed, I'm gonna get it on there a little bit better, but still not that great. So let's see what we can come up with two hands and I'll show you what kind of dimple it puts in that thing. All right, so there we are back with a two-handed crimp with the clines. You see it just puts one straight little line in there. Doesn't look as neat or as clean. I did tug on that one and it's on there pretty good. I don't think it would come off. I think it's got a good solid crimp but it took two hands to do it. It kind of looks like crap, and I have been able to pull off several other ones when crimping with these. So these would never be anything that I would crimp with. Uh, now, as, as far as the cutters go, my God, I mean, you talk about a cutter. These things, I mean, look how much room you've got there. That is a huge cutting blade, and it's that type of blade that I mean, it, that, was, that was two fingers right there. I mean, it just, it slices and dices. It's amazing. So, long story short, definitely a go-to for installers. An electrician, man, that's probably gonna be one of their most grabbed and used tools right there, being able to grab hold of a piece of hard wire up there with the tip and turn a little hook in it. You know, being able to grab stuff right there. They're, they're focused on it. See those tips, how they're kind of smooth? And also, you know, you've got a turning surface there that you can grab some stuff with. Um, you know, those are just fantastic. Knipix quality is amazing and those handles feel like butter there in your hands. So. For installers and electrician, I'd say Klein all day long. Um, next in line um, for installers would be the big beefy Kleins, just because they are going to be a little bit bigger. Um, you do have a cutting blade for the hard wire there. Um, and, and as far as technicians go, this all day long. I'm going to go with this. If you've got a larger bag, you've got a Vito with bigger pockets and size is not an issue, you've got plenty of room to put these in there, that would be good to carry also. I'd probably end up carrying both of them, to be honest with you. Um, but as far as a small technical bag, just something that is gonna get you the bare minimum, save space, save weight, um, that is when you are gonna absolutely want to go with these little Carlisles. I just can't say enough about how nice those are, what a great job they do. When you're, you know, changing out a fan motor and, you know, you want to put some new terminals on there, like I said, those cutters, you're going to slice through those wires, you're going to strip it off, get a nice, good, clean strip, and then you get those really, really nice crimps with that, that crimper just really really nice you're not going to have to worry about those things being loose or coming off there uh, you're really not even going to have to double check yourself so it's going to be hard to choose between these two uh, leave some comments below uh, which one you think you might choose uh, if you guys have any of these three leave some comments down there let everybody know what your experience is with the the tool what you think of it how you like it um, would you buy it again and all that good stuff? Uh, if you have any questions about any three of these, let me know down there in the comments. And again, the numbers on those, that was the Klein um, 13 
82.8. Not really going to focus there, but then, or did I say Klein? The Knipix 13, 82.8. Then you got the Klein 2005N, as in Nancy. And then the Carlisles out at Napa Auto Parts. Right now, those are on sale for $19.95, I believe it is. Usually they're about $29.95. These are going to roll in at about $39.40. Bucks. And then the Knipix, of course, are way up there. This is one of the most expensive tools that they make. You might be able to find it a little cheaper somewhere else, but usually those things are up in the $60 range. They are proud of their stuff, but it is good quality. So anyway, guys, that is my story with the all-in-one cutter, stripper, crimper tools. Let me know what you think below. Leave me a thumbs up if you like the video. Subscribe to my channel if you haven't already. And as always, guys, thank you for watching, and I will catch you next time.